Characters are a very versatile way to give games both mechanical and narrative depth. When used right, they're a very powerful tool for teaching game mechanics to players in an intuitive way. Even something as basic as the way characters look and move can give us context for who they are and how they function in the game. As an example, we are going to look at three basic enemies from the original Super Mario Bros. Meet the Goomba, the cannon fodder of Mario enemies. What is it about the Goomba that tells us that it's a threat? Well, those cartoonish angry eyebrows aren't exactly friendly looking, and the fact that the Goomba is moving towards the player does suggest opposition. In the later games, they would further reinforce its hostility by adding fangs to the design. A pretty goofy but effective touch. The Goomba also serves a very important role in teaching the player how to jump. The player cannot pass the Goomba without jumping, ensuring that they have to use this key ability. Besides just getting past the Goomba, there is also the possibility of the player landing right on top of it. If the player does this, the Goomba is then killed, which establishes jumping as your primary method of attack throughout the game. One other note to make is that the placement of Goombas throughout 1-1 also shows how the Goomba reacts to other objects and enemies in the environment. Unless there is a wall or another enemy in the way, the Goomba marches forward, even if it means falling into a pit. Moving on, the next enemy that the player is introduced to is the Koopa. Immediately, what draws our attention here is its round green shell, suggesting that this enemy is more resilient than the fragile Goomba. And like the Goomba, the Koopa moves towards the player, which solidifies the player's understanding of hostility in the game. Even though the Koopa doesn't look as angry as the Goomba, it's still marching towards you, looking for a fight. The unique trait of the Koopa is how it also retreats into its shell upon being stomped on, unlike the Goomba who just disappears. If the player then jumps or runs into this shell, it is then launched, sliding across the ground, taking out enemies and bouncing off walls, suggesting potential new strategies for the player. Although this shell can be dangerous if it hits the player from the side. Anyway, the last enemy that we'll be looking at is another turtle-like enemy found later in the game called a Spiny. The Spiny has a shell very similar to that of the Koopa, but the design difference serves as a counter to what we've previously learned. This is an enemy that screams, don't touch me, with the attention-grabbing red and the obvious spikes. While one could argue that for the Goomba and the Koopa it wasn't abundantly clear that the player could simply jump on top of them, the Spiny makes it very clear that you can't take it out directly and that it should be avoided. The genius of Mario's enemy design is that every enemy communicates many of its characteristics through its appearance, without explaining through text. Because of how it simply communicates behavior, it can quickly introduce new gameplay elements on the fly, without stopping to explain exactly what each new character or item does. Despite the graphical limitations of the NES, the developers of Super Mario Bros. were able to create a rather large variety of enemy types that all do a solid job of communicating their behavior through their appearance. If they could do all of this with such limited hardware, imagine what we can do now. The increased graphical fidelity of modern hardware opens us up to so many more possibilities in our character design. While the tools change as hardware evolves, the design principles of conveying mechanics through character designs remain relevant and useful throughout. Better hardware doesn't necessarily mean better design, but it does give us more possibilities. One series that follows these principles particularly well are the Souls games, namely Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Bloodborne. Going forward, we are going to take a broad look at the enemies from the first Dark Souls. The Souls franchise is infamous for its high difficulty, but it's a game that I consider tough but fair. It's a game that rewards the player for paying close attention to their surroundings and having good reflexes. It's also a game with an incredible amount of depth within its combat. The combat of Dark Souls is largely based around keeping a close eye on your opponent, watching for their attacks, and acting accordingly, via dodging, parrying, or counterattacking. While more visually complex, the enemies of Dark Souls follow the same design principles as Mario, in that every enemy conveys itself through its appearance. For example, the equipment that the humanoid enemies carry tells us just enough about how they fight. Guys with spears tend to have long-ranged thrusting attacks. Archers attack from a distance. Heavily armored enemies tend to be slow and unflinching, with devastatingly powerful moves. 
This design trend is also applied with the more monstrous character designs. Attack dogs rush at you, gigantic armored boars have an unstoppable charge, dragons breathe down fire, plant monsters hide in plain sight requiring a keen eye for spotting them, and that's just a small sample of the enemies in this game. Beyond just the physical appearance of enemies, Dark Souls is able to go more in depth with its character design thanks to something the NES simply couldn't have taken advantage of at the time, which is full animation. As stated earlier, reading the attack animations of every enemy is a huge part of combat in Dark Souls. Every enemy has a telegraphed animation, so it's up to the player to learn and recognize each one and react accordingly. If the enemy is going to do a thrusting attack, the player can block it. If it's going to be a large overhead swing, they need to roll out of the way. The animation also matches with the appearance of each enemy. For example, lowly zombie-like foot soldiers flail their weapons around, while fully armored knights gracefully swing their blades, conveying a sense of discipline and proper training in their fighting style. In Dark Souls, there is so much more emphasis on how an enemy moves, rather than just how it looks. There is a similar emphasis on animation in other games such as the 2009 reboot of Punch-Out! or the Monster Hunter series. But regardless, in the context of games, it's incredibly important that our character design evokes what those characters can do. A strong character design can make even the most complicated of mechanics seem more simple.